to this uh, webinar. I also want to thank my panelists, Augusto Maturin, who collaborates with uh, LACNING. Um, and uh, what we are going to uh, discuss is what do the global GPS uh, um, tables tell you, tell us about uh, the connections. Let me tell you what the webinar is going to um, be like um, for those of you who are coming for the first time. Let me share the screen. So we started then after six, uh, 18 UTC. The webinar will last uh, about an hour, estimated time, and uh, throughout the activity, the interaction with the panelists will be through the Q&A section. You can find that tool in the low, at the bottom of your screen. Throughout the activity, we'll ask you to please write down any questions you may have and your comments in this session. We'll leave some minutes at the end to answer all your questions. And uh, Mariela Rocha, the coordinator of our policies and training, will raise uh, the questions to Augusto, so we'll answer them uh, in the order as they come in. This webinar will be recorded. In future days, you'll receive the link and you'll have access to the training and all the material used in the presentation. This information will be sent to the email you used to register to the webinar. So uh, any question or any comment that you may have about this webinar and other topics, you may um, see it in the webinar section, in the website, in the LACNIC website, or write to this email on the screen. So now I'll give the floor to Augusto. Augusto, go ahead with your presentation. Good afternoon. Thank you. I want to thank you all for coming to the webinar. And now let me share the screen. Give me a second. There you should see the presentation. So thank you again for uh, participating in this webinar. The idea is to talk about the research that we conducted with LACNIC last year. We investigated when we analyzed the BGP uh, tables, and I'm going to discuss that later. And we want to get to know what the interconnection and the connectivity is like in Latin America. So basically, in this study, well, we this was developed by the R&D uh, session section in LACNIC with uh, Cecilio, who's present here. And the idea is for you to see the different characteristics of interconnection in the region. LACNIC has been working for quite a while on this. As a matter of fact, some years ago, we started with a Simon project that measures connectivity. About a few weeks ago, we had a webinar by Agustin Formoso there's also a very interesting report on connectivity. And now it's my turn to present this study that I uh, developed. And I use the global BGP tables to know the connectivity and connection status in the region. So I'm talking a lot about measurement. So I want to tell you about when, when you want to measure the internet, there are several things that you can think of, different aspects, ranging from the economic aspects to what extent uh, the connection is affordable and accessible for the people. In this case, um, um, we are working in the internet resilience uh, framework. And I want to state that what we work those of us working in this report, we worked on the critical infrastructure and noticed that there you have a section discussing IXPs. You know that IXPs are very important to achieve efficient connections. Imagine, for instance, well, as it, it's usually the case, for instance, in the Caribbean before having IXPs, the traffic had to go to the United States and then back to move within the same country, even the same region. 
So what the IXPs achieve is the traffic to stay locally and to take more efficient paths. So before talking more in detail about all these analysis of the internet routes, yeah, I'm going to give you a brief uh, introduction of how BGP works. Since uh, this webinar um, does not require everybody to know it, you're not all internet uh, operators. Some of you may fall asleep, but I'm going to just dedicate three minutes to basically say how it works. Imagine that you have a mobile device with this IP uh, address 10.0.0.1 and we want to connect to a messaging app and we know in the other end with this IP 200.001 and we know that all our messages will travel as bits to the servers of this app. We don't know very well how, but we know that they go through the internet. So if we go a step ahead, we know that our device is not directly connected with the server, but probably it connects through the local internet provider. And uh, the messaging uh, app uh, server connects with another. Each provider may have a number of the autonomous system. This is the AS1, and this is AS3. AS1 is our client and AS3 our server. And somehow these providers will have transit providers that will enable them to connect with each other. It's not very likely for these providers to be interconnected. So this scheme is quite simple. Usually in the internet, there are more uh, leaps. And uh, so we are, we're going to do it more simple. And uh, we're going to have uh, three autonomous systems. One is our RSP, two is transit, and uh, three is the one that provides connectivity to the app. So BGP, how does BGP work? Well, the routers, of each autonomous system have a table with a lot of information. But here, what we're interested in, what we're going to discuss in this report is the potential destinations, the networks you, you can reach and the routes through all the autonomous systems it's going to go through. In this case, the uh, AS3 will announce the BGP to the AS2 and it will report it to this other va a difundir ese mensaje so as2 will send this message we reach the network 200.00/16 and through the same autonomous system too it will reach as3 so basically autonomous system 1 our internet provider will have in its routing table bgp which can reach network 200.000/16, which is that of the messaging server, through the autonomous systems two and then three. So you can imagine then that the BGP tables are millions of records, thousands at least. So the idea is to attach all that data so that we can determine which are the ASs that connect with one another and with the countries of the region. It is likely that you have seen this schematic representation already and you see the hierarchies and different relationships. Down there we have the internet users and at the top we have the tier one network operators which can reach any part of the internet without having to depend on any other traffic provider. In our report, we're going to Vamos a hacer como una clasificación más sencilla. do a um, simpler classification because to be able to understand and classify the autonomous systems in what we showed in the previous graph with BGP is a bit complex. So what we did was to make this schematic representation, which I will explain. We're going to attach the BGP 
which are the global collectors. For example, the RIPE project has a series of collectors which are traffic, which are exchange points and they share the BGP tables which are distributed in different parts of the world. And this allows us to see that the, table, the tables are of all these collectors. The most important collector, which is the one we analyzed in the report, is zero. It has about 60 million entries, so you can imagine all these with networks from all over the world. They have a large amount of tables of the Latin American networks, which are the ones we analyzed in this report. But basically, what we are interested in is the following. Although this collector is in the other end, what always starts things is we have an autonomous system which announces the prefix. This is the origin of the prefix, the propriety, where this comes from, the owner of the prefix. Then we have different autonomous systems for transit, which send this message until they reach the collector. What we're interested in is in the relationship of the ASs as regards with respect to the country or territories of the region. So this region in black, this outline represents the territory of a country, for example, so that you can see we're interested in each BGP announcement from origin through to the end, not where it ends, but rather until which stage the autonomous systems reaches the section which no longer belongs to that country. So we can see here that autonomous system one can be announced through the prefixes. We have autonomous systems three, two, three, and four, which provide transit, but these are registered in the same country. And from AS, AS5 is a transit provider. It's not different, no difference between four and five but we want to distinguish this as a traffic provider that is somehow registered outside the country and then can connect to the other countries of the region or the world. So there's an important difference here because all the traffic providers, four, three, and two are local providers. And then we have upstream which has already been registered outside the country. So based on this classification, we have these three types of autonomous systems with respect to the countries. We have the, the origin, ASs, which use IP prefixes, the transit for three and two, and then the upstream autonomous systems, which are also transit, but are registered outside the country. So we have this classification of these three types of autonomous systems. What we did in this report then was to count based on each country, how many autonomous systems are of origin, how many are local transit and which are upstream ASs. And that would allow us to find out how strongly they depend on outside providers or not. Then we asked ourselves a series of questions which we answered in this report. As I told you, we were interested in seeing how many origin ASs each country has, how many for local traffic, and how many upstream ASs they had. But in addition to that, we asked ourselves other questions which we answered in the report. For example, which are the most important autonomous systems in each category. In other words, which is the one that announces the largest amount of IP prefixes or which is the upstream that connects to the largest number of local autonomous systems in a country. On the other hand, we want to find out about prefix announcements. So which is the average length of these prefixes? So this will allow us to learn more about um, other issues regarding IPv4. And then the average length of ASs through which the VGP announcements go through. 
or in other words, how many autonomous systems will be crossed by each message that we send to a collector or to another network. And finally, we were also interested in understanding the relationships with the amount of IXPs that the country has, because we understand that the largest number of exchange points they have, then the larger the number of providers. So we generated a series of scripts that collect data and processes these. We call these BGP LAC toolkit, which you can download from GitHub and install. And you can then collect data. You can, this is the, the link. Otherwise, you can organize LACNIC and GitHub, and then you find projects so that you can recall it uh, more easily. And basically, this toolkit is focused on two main data sources. One is the global collectors, like the RIPE data sets, which has about 19 collectors that are working today. And then we used in order to find where each resource has been registered, namely the type of IPv4, IPv6 resources or autonomous systems. For that purpose, we based ourselves on the statistics registries that all the RIRs have to publish. And among other things, the country where the organization has been registered. So we cross all this information, we then process things in different ways. Basically here, we generate different types of data sets. So from the routing tables, the BGP routing tables and the collectors, we can prepare large data sets and we have in rows each country or each prefix or each autonomous system. And from there, we can load the information and we cross that information and then we can generate different types of statistics. And this is what I will show you later on. Now, basically the important thing here is that based on countries that you might wish to study, you can select these and also depending on the collectors that we're going to use to process the data, we'll be able to obtain all this information. So the countries that we defined in the original parameters. Here we have information from the region, but if you wish so that you can see how the code works. Here I opened it and I want to show you at least one example. For example, how to process the script so process ribs, which contains the data of the collectors, you can enter different types of parameters. And as I said, in this case, collector zero of RIPE has 60 million entries. If we were to do this now, it would be executed in 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm going to select collector number 19 which is an IXP from South Africa, which has a much smaller table. And then we'll be able to process it. So by the end of the webinar, we will be able to see the results. So we're going to tell it that we're going to obtain the data from the collector 19. And in the date range is 2020, April 1st. We enter and this I had already downloaded, it starts processing all the BGP table of this collector. So that starts, it starts processing in it, it has 400,000, it has about 10 million tables. So we'll leave it running in the background. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you the data. So these scripts are available in GitHub. And if you're interested, you can write to me, but this is quite simple to use. It's not at all complicated. Another interesting thing that you can do, in addition to defining the collectors, 
to provide information are the countries that you can use to calculate the information in this case. The distinction of the regions is based on the RIRs. I did RIN, LACNIC, RIPEN, CC, AFRINIC. So what happened in this report is that when we showed the reports for our region, we're going to take the LACNIC region into account. So there'll be some countries of the Caribbean that will not include. This is because I wanted to distinguish this uh, based on regions, but you can take this code and you can replace the countries in the region if you wish, and then set up a region, for example, Latin America and the Caribbean. But in this case, for uh, reasons of methodology, I selected LACNIC, but you can include regions as you wish. So then in the meantime, I'm going to show you some data that we obtained. This is in general for the entire region. You can see the data um, country by country basis. And the data on this table were calculated with z c z collector number zero, which is the one in Europe. And this measurement was done uh, mid-2020, but the information hasn't very, very much. All the network operators at LACNIC announce a total amount of 135,000 prefixes, a bit more. This added, adding up IPv4 and IPv6. If we break this down, it's, it's more than 100,000 IPv4 and almost 20,000 IPv6 prefixes. Only 13% of the prefixes are IPv6 prefixes. So in addition, to the fact that IPv6 is not so widespread, we have to understand that an IPv6 prefix contains many more IP addresses in general compared to IPv4, which we are now in the final stages of its exhaustion. And we can see this in the average prefix length, length that is announced. As you can see, the average IPv4 prefixes length is 22, so it's higher than slash 22. So this is clearly seen because this increases more and more each time because of the exhaustion that is taking place with IPv4. And this compared to IPv6, which in addition to being longer, in average, the size is slash 40. And then we have the average of the autonomous systems classification. We have the origin, the local traffic, and the upstream ASs, as I mentioned earlier. Now, speaking about averages in the region could be a bit tricky, we could say, because you will see that this is these are quite large numbers. For example, Brazil, which is an enormous country, then this sort of affects the statistics considerably. So having 76 autonomous systems for transit is not so real in some of the countries of the region because of the size. Overall, we saw 89 IXPs, this we took from another database. But this is a total amount throughout Latin America and the Caribbean. And the average length of the AS path, each, how many autonomous systems are contained, then this is 5.5. It's between five and six. So it's quite good. This compared to collector zero of RIPE. Then we have data regarding the most important autonomous systems in the region. For example, here we have the ranking of the upstream autonomous systems that connect to more countries that provide international traffic to different countries. 
This is top of the list is Taxius Telefonica, which connects to 20 countries in the region. There are 20 countries that have this autonomous system for the upstream, that have Taxius for upstream, followed by Hurricane Electric, which also connects to 19 countries. And third in the list is shared by Cogent and Columbus networks, which connect to 18 countries each. Then we have names that are quite important, like Tilia, Telecom Italia, etc. And as you can see, all these autonomous systems and networks are registered outside the region. The one that is not registered in the region is the AS52468, uh, which is UFINET the AS Panama. In Panama. That's the only autonomous uh, uh, system that is registered in LACNIC. All the rest are in Europe or in uh, the United States. So we can see quite similar data if we consider the autonomous systems that are upstream of more autonomous systems in the region. There we have in ranking first Hurricane Electric again, and then uh, Telecom Italia also raises it uh, quite a lot because uh, among the countries that connect, these are the countries with more autonomous systems. And then, as you see, the names get repeated here. You no longer see Panama's uh, autonomous system because although it connects many countries in Central America and the Caribbean, these countries do not have too many autonomous systems registered. That's why it's not here in the ranking. So what we can see is that, well, we started to think where do our providers connect uh, uh, the upstream AS? Where are they from? And what are the countries in the, our region that they're giving transit to? And we see these graphs, the toolkit generates data sets that uh, enable us to draw these uh, charts quite easily. And they give us an idea of uh, most uh, upstream autonomous systems of each region in each country. So here we can see it based on the prefixes. All the prefixes, for instance, here in Brazil. The prefixes in Brazil, usually the first extend, the first app upstream autonomous system outside Brazil, about one third go to ARIN, that is to United States or to North America, and the third goes to RIPE, to Europe. And then the remaining third, much of it goes to LACNIC, and then to a lesser extent, about 10% go to Phoenix, to, to AFRINIC, Africa or to APNIC. The rest of the countries, well, there some uh, are, uh, look very small because of the incidence of Brazil. Now, if we look to your right, you see the regions that receive more upstream, that have more upstream autonomous systems in our region. And you can see that our, in our networks, to a great extent, get connected with Europe to RIBE or to uh, North America, ARIN. And within the region, there are autonomous systems that interconnect us with each other, but they are a few if we compare them with uh, Europe and North America. Here we can see the graph removing Brazil, you see the rest. But basically you see that the same thing gets repeated with predominance of ARIN and uh, RIBE and to a lesser extent LACNIC and much more uh, rarer uh, AFRINIC and APNIC. Now, down there I show you the date of these data. This was February this year, so it's more recent. And here I took five collectors, not just collector zero of RIPE, but also four additional collectors. And I tried to see a range of regions. There's a collector 
of the United States, another one of Asia, another one Afri uh, uh, um, Asia and Brazil in the region to avoid any biases, uh, for instance, attributing them all to right because there's only one connector, a collector with Europe. So as you may see here, based on the prefixes that are announced and uh, the upstream autonomous systems, you can do the same, we can do the same and to see um, the autonomous systems that connect through other uh, upstream transit, uh, yes. But basically the results are, the data are more or less the same. Here you see that two, here you have the thirds, one third to Europe, one third to North America, and the remaining third between LACNIC, APNIC, and AFRINIC. So here you can see most autonomous systems when we remove RIPE and ARIN, at least in Brazil, we see that most connect both with Africa and uh, APNIC and our region. There's not much of a difference. And we can also, if we remove Brazil to see a different data, we continue to see the predominance of ARIN and RIPE. And to a lesser extent, LACNIC and very little APNIC and AFRINIC with very little direct connectivity. Then we can also see data per country. The report is available in uh, the technical reports in LACNIC, but we also have a website where we publish the results after running this toolkit and the data sets that you can browse. And there you, and uh, you can enter any, uh, I have this open, and there you can consult the data per country. I don't know whether you want to see any countries, if there's somebody there with uh, the chat at hand, and if you want to see your country, we can see it now. There, Ecuador, Guatemala, Ecuador was first. So let's look for Ecuador. There, well, Mexico got later. But anyway, you can check it later. The idea here was to give you an example that helps you interpret the data. And you can all look for your countries. First, it's going to show you the share of prefixes announced, IPv4 and IPv6 in the country. Obviously, IPv4 will have most prefixes announced because of a number of reasons. And then you can see the evolution, the different cases. This is last year. You see the number of prefixes announced each month and how they evolve. Notice that it goes up and down, but anyway, you have a lot of data. And in this case, Ecuador has an average of IPv4 prefixes, uh, the length is uh, 23.32. So the networks are very fragmented or maybe the IPv4 addresses that they could get were at the last uh, stages where IPv4 was almost depleted. So the prefixes are much smaller. So the networks that they announce are very close to slash 24. And then there are countries like Uruguay or Cuba that have old resources and they haven't changed much so their average length is much smaller closer to slash 22. so and the same thing can be seen with ipv6 prefixes they have only a few ipv6 prefixes announced but as you can see in october or november last year it went up very steeply and then we have the autonomous systems at origin, transit, and upstream. You can see, obviously, you're going to have more, many more origin as uh, there are 130, 17 give local transit, and 19 give transit, uh, outbound transit or international 
Peru, they're asking me. Well, you can see it later. You can see your own country. Well, the average length is 5.77 and they have five IXPs. So later on, you can each enter BGP LAC, BGP LAC dot labs dot lacnic dot net. And I'm, I'm going to copy the link later for you to see it in the chat so that you can see your country. We also have, we also have the report that you can download. I'm going to give you a QR code so that you can download it faster. And it has information on the countries. And here, as I was, well, Peru, please, they asked me. So as, as they were more emphatic, let's see what's happening in Peru in this report. And it shows similar data. The number of um, autonomous system origin, upstream, transit, and the most important autonomous system. Well, for instance, here, the provider that um, uh, announces more prefixes is Telefonica de Peru, followed by America Mobile, and then the transit autonomous systems are optical technologies. This is the one that gives transit to more autonomous systems, at least in Peru. Eight autonomous systems. And uh, the upstream autonomous systems that give international transit are Telxius, that's Telefonica, Telecom Italia, and um, they give 19, 14, and 13 autonomous systems. So you can each download the report and see the information about your own countries. Now let's go back to the slide. There we are. Just give me a second. There. So let's draw some conclusions. We can see um, Something that is very clear is that our countries connect a lot to North America and Europe, Aaron and Ripe, and that may, uh, so very often the transit goes there and then comes back to the region and that uh, results in a latency cost and having the connectivity depend on other regions. So this could provide an opportunity to generate business opportunities or traffic or connections between the countries of the region. As we saw, this hasn't been fully taken advantage of. There's still a lot of margin. Como también otra conclusión que se puede ver, eh, eso cada uno puede interpretar después los datos, es ver la concentración de operadores o no que hay en distintos países. Eh, digamos, si hay un solo sistema autónomo que anuncia más de la mitad de los prefijos del país, o sea, probablemente hay una mayor concentración que en alguno en el que el mayor eh, sistema autónomo eh, anuncie menos de un 5% de de todos los prefijos anunciados en, en, en ese mismo país, como pasa en Brasil, que, que bueno, tiene un montón de, de operadores. Eh, eso es cada, no quiero entrar demasiado en detalle por cada país, pero lo pueden ver en el, en el informe, de, en la sección de cada país, eh, cuántos prefijos anuncia cada, cada, cada sistema autónomo de cada país y, y, bueno, y el share que tienen. Eh, y por otro lado... Y puedes ver su share. Por otro lado... The up, most important upstream operators, well, you have Telsius, Telefonica, American Electric, Columbus, uh, etc. As you see, there are none in the region. So then the following steps, as you see, mostly the, the important thing here is the last uh, bullet that is generating a community in the region, working on the data on the internet. It would be interesting to have more people interested in this. In this case, 
now there were many indicators and uh, in the tables there are a lot of things that can be analyzed there you have the codes published and you can change them for modify them for different things for instance uh, choosing different uh, um, uh, cases and comparing running the same countries but with different collectors or different countries with the same collectors so there are many potential combinations and you can study that generating indicators in the regions uh, that is we work in latin america but uh, this uh, uh, study could be conducted for the entire lacnic region and you can also expand the information that we saw on the announcement of the ipv4 and ipv6 prefixes there's a lot of data that is generated each collector uh, has millions of uh, tables now you can see this um, so you can see now this collector which is a small connector collector executed 8 million entries in, entries in this table and based on that different data sets are generated which are the ones that have the information which I referred to during this webinar as I said there are millions of entries that can be checked and you can obtain a lot of information from there so it would be quite interesting if more people would become involved and then set up what could be a community. So in line with that, I want to give, leave my contact information. You can write an email or this is my Twitter address and then you can download the report with this QR. So, in the meantime, we now have the Q&A session. If you would like to make comments or questions, I'm happy to take any. Thank you, Augusto. Yes, we'll now go over to the questions. We suggest that those of you who have questions or comments, please include this in the Q&A slot. Mariela Rocha will now be assisting us with the questions. Hi, Mariela. Hello, Sandra. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Hi, Augusto. Augusto, I have a couple of questions here from the participants. The first question is from Thomas Lynch. Thomas would like to know, this is a question he asked when you showed one of your slides. So maybe you can go back to the slide where you had the AS6939. He wants to know if this AS6939, does it provide traffic or is this connected to the IXPs? Uh, so let's look for it. AS6939. That went there, yes. Hurricane Electric. So let me read the question again. Yes. It provides transit. It could be connected to the IXPs. Let me see how I can explain. Wait. So it could be connected to the IXP if the IXP has been registered in the same country where this measurement began in line with the origin AS or it could be that it was registered as upstream but somehow or other there has to be this autonomous system had to continue to announce the prefixes of the IXP or the origin AS to autonomous systems I imagine this would be North America which are transit autonomous systems that then reach the relevant collector in other words, 
the road and the bus. It provides transit. Excelente, gracias Augusto. Excellent, thank you Augusto. Next question is from an anonymous participant. The amount of IXPs in our country, is this determined based on the BGP tables analysis or do you take this from elsewhere? Eh, acá eh, lo este, ahí está, está en chiquitito. Eh, so lo que lo tomamos es, we take this from a CADA dataset, and CADA has three sources, namely Peering DB, and then I think a database of Hurricane Electric, and from there we take of DCH, which are the IXPs registered in BCH. So that is a point in the report which we should find more information on, namely data on the IXPs. So I think these are the ones that at least appear in DCH. Great. Next question from Abraham, and he wants to know, in order to develop traffic exchange points, IXPs, what should be the topology you would recommend for an IXP? Well, I really don't know. I can only show the data. And what you can see here is you can view the different countries or regions that don't have direct interconnection, so that would be a good point to include an exchange point, although this has to be supplemented with other things. For example, if there is traffic between those two countries that wish to connect. But beyond that, I don't want to enter an area where I'm not an expert. So we have another question from Thomas Lynch. The limited amount of traffic in the region, is this the result of the lack of interconnections between countries or because there are only few interconnections between countries? Well, that question, I think it can have many answers. And also, I will answer with another question, which is the cause, which is the consequence? So we don't connect much between one another because connections are not so good and these have to be improved? Or is it because the connections are not so good because not much investment, investment has been made because we're not so interested in connecting between ourselves? So I can only answer your question with a question and this would deserve further uh, study. Thank you, Augusto. Anonymous participant, from the result of the analysis you shared with us, what do you call anomalies? What are the 58 that you found? Well, this is a point that wasn't well documented in the toolkit. We have to really study this in depth. It often happens now that when crossing data with a delegated and what you have on the tables, it might happen that a prefix and that is announced, is it registered in one country, but is announced by an autonomous system that it registered in a different country. So in some cases, this is totally normal because it can be a network operator that has operations in different countries and there we can register the IP resources. But in this case, for the purpose of the study, we considered this an anomaly. Another case is when you have IP prefixes announced by autonomous systems that are, that are private or do not correspond to the region where they should. So we consider those an anomaly. And this is what came out in the script. We have even more questions. Teresa Lopez asked, what 
how much time do we have to change to IPv6 and what is the remaining IPv4 for, for volume we have? What is the rate? I guess she is referring to the statistics you showed us for traffic, but maybe Teresa can expand her question further. Yes, what I can say here is how much time do we have left? Well, there are a large variety of opinions and studies that speak about this at LACNIC. We're already at the exhaustion stage. So basically, there are not very many resources left. But what I would like to clarify is that maybe the numbers produced by this report show that IPv6 numbers are smaller than the ones that you can see in other studies. Remember that here what we did was just to count the prefixes that were announced. Imagine a prefix that is announced in IPv4 at the most had a couple of thousands of IP addresses and in IPv6 we have hundreds of thousands. So each prefix will have many more addresses. So it's quite natural that more prefixes are announced in IPv4 for the reason that the networks are more disaggregated. This study allows us to see that the rate at which the IPv6 prefixes start to increase. And this is interesting in the sense of how the IPv6 adoption is evolving. Thank you, Augusto. Teresa, if you wish, you can ask your question um, and expand your comment. We have more questions from Mauricio Oviedo. He says, have you considered using IXPDB for the IP, IXPs list? Yes, we have analyzed or considered using IXPDB. And the point is that doing a query based on the country, for example, I want to obtain all the IXPs that belong to Argentina or to Uruguay or to the Dominican Republic. So that direct query, that functionality was not included at the moment. So we continued using the sources. But in, in fact, we have considered that and with LAC IX, we have considered uh, using that data source. We have a question from Ivan Morales. It's not a question, it's more a statement. And he says, looking at the report, it states that Guatemala had zero IXPs, and that is not true. There's one, and in fact, it has a LACNIC BGP collector. Ivan is saying that. Would you like to make any comments on that? Yes, of course. It is likely that I that IXP might be recent, but that IXP might not be registered in TCH. That is why CADA did not include it in its data set. And that is why it wasn't included in this report. It is very much in line with these questions. It, we have to, basically it's like different censuses that are done of the IXPs and we selected one and it is likely that sometimes some escape the information, but the amount of IXPs stated in this report is what I think the source at least has been refer referenced. Thank you. Let me say that those issues that are not part of this webinar can be redirected to technologia at lacnic.net or any other address like the ones that my colleagues are including in the chat. Now, another question. This one is in Portuguese. Well, this is not a question, but rather a tip. Augusto, do you need interpretation? It says, this is not a question, but rather like a tip, a good data source of IXP is the IXP database of 
IXF. Are you familiar with that? IXF, I don't know exactly which that is. If there's uh, XBGB, Alessandra, maybe you can send us a link. Yes, Alessandra Martins. Yes, thank you for that tip. And finally, I think this is the last question asked by a participant who is N. Cornejo. And that person says, in the PDF report, there is a classification called our most important origin autonomous systems, which was a criterion to determine the relevance of each autonomous system. I think that using the amount of prefixes that are announced, however, my opinion, this would show the disaggregation rather than the relevance. Yes, in fact, that is quite true, yes. At least this is speaking about the origin systems. Then we have the transit ones, but in fact, for the origin systems that they announce the IP addresses to take the prefixes, like I said, it could be a bit tricky comparing IPv4 with IPv6 for the amount of prefixes. And it can also generate some bias when we only count the announced prefixes instead of announcing exactly the amount of addresses that are announced of each prefix and how many addresses that includes. So it is quite true that it could generate a bias if there is an autonomous system that would like to view this as more important. Then it could be a smaller prefix. If you think we can have the last question, it would be good for wrapping up. It says that Carolina, who says the um, uh, S announcements would be, you know, Annika, would be considered an anomaly in analyzing the, the tool. Well, I, I don't know whether BGP has anything to do with uh, these uh, DNS uh, announcements, but I think that in order to analyze the BGP tables, we use a tool uh, of, um, I, I think that those issues are claimed with the tools that we use, if there's any, if that has anything to do uh, with BGP. Basically, what we do is to use this tool, the Python library, and uh, I imagine that those issues, those anomalies can be solved by the tool. Thank you, Augusto. So that was the last question that we had for you. So I leave this uh, Q&A session and I'll give the floor to you, Augusto and Sandra. Thank you. Thank you, Mariela. Thanks a lot, Augusto. Well, so let's wrap up this meeting. We thank now, Augusto, would you like to add anything before closing? Well, I just want to encourage you all to, to try this. Download the toolkit, execute it, be a bit patient because sometimes it takes some time, but play with the data. And if you have any questions, you can ask me. It would be very interesting to have a number of people in the community interested in generating reports like this. And then we have the technical forum of LACNIC. Um, so the results that uh, you get, you can publish them here. So it would be very good for you to get involved and be part of this community. So you can contact me if you have any questions or you can contact LACNIC, Guillermo or whoever. It would be very interesting to continue to work with data to become better familiar with how we are communicating, how we are connecting and uh, improve things. Well, thank you all, thank all the participants. Thank you for your time. And uh, I invite you to visit uh, 
the website of La Clinique um, to see the events and to pay attention to the uh, social media to see our next events. So thank you. See you in the next webinar. Have a nice afternoon.